Thank you. In Scotland, children begin learning to programme from the age of three. And last month, the Estonian government announced that children from six to 18 would learn to programme computers as part of their national curriculum. Computer programming is giving a computer a set of instructions to follow in a language that it understands. But in the rest of the UK, our curriculum focuses much more on teaching children how to use software rather than produce it. And by that software, I mean the kind of software that produces spreadsheets and presentations and you can write essays with. Now, I'm not saying that these skills aren't valuable. They're extremely valuable. I use them every single day in my own professional life. But in this day and age, it's simply not enough. Last month, I conducted a survey of 1,300 computer programmers. And I asked them, what age did you start learning to program? 69% of them said that they started under the age of 14. Today, children are born into the world, when, in the, into the kind of world where the use of digital and web-enabled devices is the norm. These children are called digital natives. This little girl is one, and she's using her tablet very confidently for a one-year-old. It's upside down, granted, but anyway. <laughs> she tries to use a magazine, but the content that she recognises from her iPad doesn't react in the same way. She's pinching <laughs> and scrolling, and it's very upsetting. She's a digital native. <laughs> and she just gives up. Just because a digital native can consume does not mean they can produce. If we teach children to code, they can become active creators rather than passive consumers. So why else should we teach children to code? Well, for a start, it's a lot of fun and it can be very creative. When you've seen firepower added to a shark's bottom or a piano made out of bananas, then you'll know what I mean. Teaching children to code empowers them to bring their imaginations to life. It's also a very, very useful life skill. Um, it strengthens logical thinking and problem-solving skills and encourages creativity. And it's a, great support, it's a great support for subjects like science, maths and technology. And it can also be a fantastic career choice. If you talk to any tech company at the moment, they'll tell you there's a deficit of programmers. There are simply not enough children growing up learning computer science to fill the amount of programmer roles that are available. So it could be a great boost to our economy too, and heaven knows we absolutely need it. So how do we encourage children into programming in the first place? Because on the face of it, it can be a bit dry and a bit scary. Well, let's think for a moment about what a nine-year-old enjoys. I'm going to go ahead and make some massive sweeping generalizations here, so just go with me. Children enjoy playing with apps and playing with games. If you've got a nine-year-old and a smartphone, you'll know what I'm talking about. So it's not too much of a logic jump to think that they might like making apps and making games. In the same survey I did last month, I asked the programmers, what got you inspired to start programming? Oh. And 62% said that making things was what got them started. And that broke down into making websites and making games and making very simple com computer programs. So we know that it's something that we should be teaching children. And we know it's something that they're going to enjoy learning. So we should just change the curriculum, right, and get on with it. But there is a problem. Most teachers don't know how to code not even the basics. And let's just have a little look back in time. Each of these lines is a lifetime. I've given people 80 years to live because I'm a bit mean. And I've used my family as my grandmother, my mother, myself, and my nephew, Finley. And here we are right now in 2012, and approximately 40 years ago when the internet was invented. And 20 years later, the first web page went live. Now, in the intervening 20 years, there's been an awful lot of progress. We've had web mail, web search engines, streaming, file sharing, and social networks. And all of these things have colluded to the mass public use of the web. Now, halfway through that point, I would have hoped somebody somewhere 
might have thought, maybe this is the kind of thing we need to be teaching our children so that they can continue our progress in the future. But that didn't happen. And so what we're looking at is about 10 years, and that's generous, of time where we could have been learning to code or, and teaching our teachers how to code so that they can pass it on. It didn't happen, and so now we have a lost generation that will grow up to be code illiterate. So how do we bridge that gap? Because I think it does need bridging. Well, this is where my personal story starts. About in March this year, um, I was sitting with my friend Linda, drinking too much beer on a Monday, as one tends to do, when a very simple and dangerous idea occurred to us. What if we were to send developers to schools to teach children how to code in after-school coding clubs? That way, they'd be passing on their knowledge, and it would plug some of the knowledge gap that's occurred. Now, we tried really, really hard to forget about this idea, because we realized what a massive job it would be. But it didn't go away. And so after about a month, we launched our project. It was a call to arms to the tech industry. We said, we promise we'll create projects if you will go to your local primary school and teach them in after-school coding clubs. We got a team of writers together, and we used a programming language called Scratch. I don't know if you've heard of Scratch, but it was developed by the clever guys over at MIT. And it's developed specifically for children to learn the basics of programming. It looks like this. Um, so over on the left-hand side, there are blocks, and we drag them into the center. They click together to make scripts, and they control the actions that are going on on what's called the stage in the center, over, in, on this bit over here. We created nine projects using Scratch. Each one creates a toy, an animation, or a game. And what we're doing is we are teaching children to code by stealth. So they're enjoying making the games and animations that we know they already enjoy making, but we're sneaking it in like vegetables into a meal. <laughs> That's very sneaky. So we tested these projects in 20 schools uh, at the last, in the last half of the summer term this year. And we asked each school to give us feedback at the end of each project so we could refine them and make them better. We asked the kids to rate the projects from zero at boring to 100 most fun they've ever had in their lives. And I'm really happy to say that our projects are 92% fun. <laughs> so when we first started this project, we thought, we'll have about 20 clubs by the end of the year. Um, but that didn't happen. We had an overwhelming response from the public. Um, and I'm really pleased to say that we started this September, and we now have 300 clubs in the UK. There are about 15 children in each co-club, um, which means that about 4,500 children have started programming since, since September. Now, there are 23,000 primary schools in the UK. So whilst 300 sounds like a big number, it's actually only 1.3% of those schools. And for us, that's just not enough. Why shouldn't every child have the chance to learn this if they want to? There are 333,000 software professionals in the UK. So it's our job to connect those professionals with their local primary schools and give them as much support as possible so that they can create as many clubs as possible and more children can learn to code. Now, one day, digital natives will grow up and they'll become teachers themselves and they'll bring with them the knowledge that code literacy is an important skill. So if we can teach this generation to code, they can teach the next generation and so on and so forth. About three weeks ago, I was talking to a little boy in Code Club called Adam. And I asked Adam, what do you want to be when you're older? He said, I want to be a programmer or a stuntman. <laughs> so for his safety, <laughs> the chance to inspire thousands of children and a possible boost to the economy, I vote we teach the next generation to code. Thank you.